Assalamu alaikum fam, hope you're doing well. We are continuing the Sword of Allah. It has been action packed as you know. Let's continue, we're on page 157. While the Battle of Buzika was being fought, certain tribes had stood aside and watched. These were the tribe of Bani Amir and certain clans of the Hawazin and Bani Sulaim. Okay, so they're just like, hey, we're gonna see what happens. Though inclined towards Tuleha, they had wisely refrained from the battle and preferred to sit on the fence until the outcome of the battle was known. Okay, so those couple clans and the tribes of Bani Amir and Bani Sulaim at the Battle of Buzika, they're just sitting on the sidelines, watching it out. The outcome was soon known. Peace and quiet had hardly returned to Buzika when the tribes came to Halid and submitted. Ha <laughs> ha. Oh, that's pretty cool. Halid gets to see a lot of people submit. That's pretty cool. We re-enter what came out of, they declared. We re-enter what we came out of. Oh. Do you see that? They were apostates, and now they are submitting again. We believe in Allah and His Messenger. We shall submit to His orders with our lives and property. Soon, other section of repentant Arabs began to pour into Buzika. We submit, was the universal cry. But Halid remembered the instructions of the Caliph to kill all who had killed Muslims. He refused to accept their submission, which meant that they could be attacked, killed, and enslaved until they had handed over every murderer in the tribe to, to the tribes agreed. Okay, so look at that. They really had a sense of justice and unity to get what happened to the Muslims. They were united. Abu Bakr told Halid, take care of those who were once Muslims, turned apostate, killed other Muslims, and fought against us. So, look at that. Wow. Really shows you, doesn't it? All the murderers were lined up. Halid's justice was swift. He had each murderer killed in exactly the same manner as he had employed to kill his Muslim victim. Very clever. Some were beheaded, some were burnt alive, some stoned to death. Some were thrown from tops of cliffs. While others were shot to death with arrows. A few were cast into wells. An eye for an eye. Okay, so the arrow point, Catholics did that. Saint Sebastian, he was shot with a bunch of arrows. He was the victim. But the Romans did that, right? <laughs> the cliffs part, I think every culture did that. Aztecs especially. They kick you down the stairs of the pyramid. Pum, 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 pum. Wow. Burnt. Come on. Catholics, you know how many people they burned? Bloody Mary. Uh, Mary Tudor of the Tudor dynasty. She was called Bloody Mary because she used to burn Protestants alive because she was a Catholic. <laughs> a lot of people don't know that. That drink, that cocktail is named after her. Because it's red tomato juice, look like blood, and it's spicy. Get it? Spicy burn, Bloody Mary. A lot of people don't know that, but uh, yeah. So if you're pearl clutching as a Christian, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> oh my gosh, Halid done the job. Having completed this task, Halid wrote to Abu Bakr and gave him a complete account of all that had passed. The Halif wrote him a complimentary letter in reply, congratulating him on his success approving his actions and praying for his continued success. After the action against the Bani Sulaim at Nakra, Khalid stayed at Buzika for three weeks, receiving the submission of the tribes and punishing the murderers. So notice this. Bani Sulaim, they're another tribe, right, at Nakra. N-A-Q-R-A. -A. What's really great about this book is that they do give us lots of geographical locations for us to nerd out on. So he is, Khalid is like very effective very effective asset. He's getting the job done. He's not having um, any sense of fear. I mean, he's, a, he's very manly. He's very strong. Very formidable. Demands and commands respect. Do you see that? It's not uber soft, filled with soy. Then he turned his steps towards Zafar. Okay, cool, look at that. Zafar, that sounds cool. Where a lady needed his attention. He looked forward eagerly to the rendezvous, and she awaited him with breathless anticipation. Ooh, who's this gonna be? Salma, alias Um Zemil, was a first cousin of Uyena. Her father, too, was a big chief, Malik bin Huzaifa. Wow, that's cool. So her dad is Chief Malik bin Huzaifa of the Gadafan. So Salma, her dad is a chief of the Gadafans. Not only was her father a noted chief, 
but her mother Um Kirfa, also was a great lady, held in esteem and veneration by the tribe. So her mom is pretty, pretty legit. You see that? In the time of the Holy Prophet, the mother had fought against the Muslims and had been captured in battle and killed. So Salma's mom was a freaking warrior. Um Kirfa, you see that? Even though she fought against the Prophet, peace be upon him, it's like the Gadafan had some strong people. You see that? But memories of the chieftainess had remained alive among the Gadafan. Salma had been taken captive and led to Medina, where the Prophet, peace be upon him, presented her as a slave to his wife, Aisha. But Salma was not happy, so Aisha set her free, and she returned to her tribe. Look at that. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, brought a chieftain's daughter as a gift to his wife. Oh, if your man won't even bring you something from the store, the prophet got a chieftain's daughter. You know, like, wow. He's like, here, a chieftain's daughter. Oh. Okay, like, some of you might not get what I'm saying. Is like, okay, imagine somebody's being cruel to your husband, and then your husband gets a promotion. He makes that person's wife work for you in a very menial position and then you get a sort of satisfaction from seeing like, hey, you know, some justice has been done. But then you pardon that person and I was like, hey, you can go, you know? But there's still something there about the quality of the present presented to his wife, the prophet. See that? That's cool. But also she would have been safe too, you know? Aisha's not going to mistreat her, obviously, right? Better to be, this, if you're going to be a slave, better to be a slave of a noble person than of a degenerate. After the death of her parents, Selma rose in stature until she began to command the same respect and affection in her tribe as her mother had enjoyed. Okay, so she's back with her tribe and now she's, you know, living out her legacy. She also would have told them too, like, hey, I was captured, but they let me go. She became, and this was unusual among the Arabs, a chief in her own right. So she was a female chief. Salma was a female chief. Wow. We're getting there, right? Her mother had owned a magnificent camel, which was now inherited by Salma. I wonder why it was magnificent. Did it run fast, or was it like very healthy looking? And since the daughter looked just like the mother, whenever she rode the camel, she reminded her people of the departed grand dame. Oh, so people were like, hey... We liked your mom, Um Kirfa. She was very great chieftainess of the Gadafan. And your father, Chief Malik bin Huzaifa, is great. And you have the same camel. And you look like her. Huh, you know? Selma became one of the leaders of the apostasy, an implacable enemy of Islam. Really? Oh, I thought it was going to go more happy. No, oh, I thought she was going to go become a Muslim. After the Battle of Buzika and the actions of Gamara, some of those who had lost Halid along with many diehards from Hawazin and the Bani Sulaim hastened to Zafar. So, so you're telling me that if Aisha would have just kept her, she wouldn't have been in this formidable apostasy enemy of Islam? So the... At the western edge of Sulema range, and so so her Aisha's act of kindness actually cost her in the end. Oh man. At the western edge of Sulema range and joined the army of Salma. Oh boy. Okay, so the Bani Sulaim, they're going over to Zafar and they're gonna go join the army of Salma. Wow. She upbraided them mercilessly for their defeat and their abandonment of Uyena. Uyena's her first cousin, remember? And such was the awe of this lady that they took it without a murmur. Oh wow, so she commanded a presence. Look at that. With her strong hand, she whipped this motley collection into shape as a closely knit, well-organized army. And within a few days, she had become a threat to the authority of Islam. So you see that? She was smart. So she's a strong woman. She's going against Islam. But she is a chief's daughter and she's showing it. She doesn't have to be just squishy, bishy, soft. She's present, you know? So even though she's going against the Muslims, 
it's almost like the Muslim women at that time would have obviously seen that there is something to these tribal women, that they are strong in another way, to the point where she can actually unify and well organize her, her fighting units. Think about that. Think about that. Wasn't just... <laughs> huh. Hold on, though. She's so smart, right? Maybe she manipulated Aisha to get free. Maybe she was like, she was not happy because she's so strong. If she, if of course, if she is able to shape military men, of course she's not going to be happy being a servant. And Aisha might have saw this and not understood maybe the, the risks of letting a chieftain's daughter go who has a military mind. Right? Yeah. There's a lot of complex things here because that's a strategic person to keep an eye on. Aisha let her go and now look what she's doing. She knew that Halid, now free of the problem of the Buzika, would now come to deal with her. Wow, so she knows, right? Halid's like, hey, whoa. She eagerly awaited a clash with the sword of Allah. Look at that. So. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, presented her as a slave to his wife. Aisha let her go. Salma gets her mom's camel. The people of the Gadafan see her as like, hey, you know, we have our leader back. And Um Kirfa is dead. Her daughter is going to be something good. And now she has made the people into a closely knit unit to go against Halid. Wow. Halid marched his corpse from Buzika to Zafar, where the army of Islam again came face to face with the army of disbelief. Again, Halid took the initiative and attacked. But the battle proved hard. While Halid was able to drive back the wings, he could make no progress against the center of the apostates. Okay, so here's the hole of the center. He's able to be like, hey, get out, but there's a strong center right there. The center stood firm. Here rode Salma in an armed litter atop her mother's famous camel. You know, if I was Halid, I would have been upset a little bit. I wonder if Haisha got in trouble for that. Allah wills what he wills. But could you imagine Halid is like, I did all these battles. Remember, they just got rid of those apostates previously, remember? Uh, the ones who he did an eye for an eye for. Remember, he just... Yeah, I mean, he just got them. The Battle of Busika, right? He, he had to take out some of those people. He gets done with that and then sees Selma there when Selma was not in that position previously. Wow. And from this command post, she personally conducted the battle. Around her camel were gathered the bravest of her warriors, determined to sacrifice their lives in defense of the noble animal and its venerated rider. So Selma is deeply respected. I mean, wow. Look at that. Hui. Khalid realized that in the person of Salma lay the moral strength of the enemy force. That's true, yeah. And that as long as she survived in her litter, the battle would continue and turn into a bloodbath. She had to be eliminated. Consequently, leading a picked group of warriors, he made determined thrust towards the camel, and after some vicious sword fighting was able to get to the animal. With a few slashes, the animal was brought down, and with it fell the prized litter. Salma was killed immediately. Wow. That's smart, though. She used, like, because the symbolic emphasis there. He got some good men, penetrated through. That's almost like a mission where it's like, he doesn't know if he's going to make it out, right? That Halid is so brave as a man that he sees a formidable chieftainess who is now on the opposite side, right? Always was, but got free because of Aisha. And he sees this because we got to, instead of, okay, we can't move the wings. The center is strong. She's the one who keeps the morale alive. Let's go straight to her. Boom. And they know they could get sliced and diced. But he goes anyways. He doesn't sit down and tell everyone to be soft, you know. No, he's like, let's go. Let's go. Right? Wow. And he succeeds. He succeeds. Remember, he just got done with the other ones. The Buzika. At Buzika. The Battle of Buzika. Now, he's done this. He took down Selma. He's just... He, he's just hitting it all. Boom, 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 boom. 
Around her sprawled the bodies of a hundred of her followers who had fought to the last defense of their chief. Wow, so that's cool for her, man. She had a hundred solid crew that were like, we're going to stay here. Salma, what a story. What a story. Wow. With the death of Salma, all resistance collapsed. And the apostates scattered in all directions. Salma had given Halid the hardest fight since Tuleha. You see that? And she was once not in that position. Wow. That's amazing. That's like so amazing. Halid is brave and Salma is brave. Wow. And the Prophet brought his wife an honorable uh, tribute. The Salma Range, a range of black rugged hills standing some 40 miles southeast of the town Hill, is believed to have been named after Salma. Um Zamil, a fighting tribute to a grand lady who had the courage to stand and fight against the greatest soldier of the day who went down fighting. That's amazing. The Salma Range. Oh, I want to go there. Wow. What a story. What a story. Even though she fought against the Muslims, it's just, just amazing. The steel she would have to go in against Halid. Like, wow. The Battle of Zafar was fought in late October 632, late Rajab 11 al-Hijri. For a few days, Halid rested his men. Then he gave orders for the march to Buta to fight Malik bin Nurai. Look at that. Look at that. Just, just, look at that. Some people, they can't even get up for a Fajr prayer. Halid is stacking battle. He, Buzika, Salma, now he's on his way to Buta. Wow. Just battle after battle after battle. That's male masculinity. Just battle, just wow. Just amazing. What is he eating? Allah may have like blessed him, man. Jeez. To fight Malik bin Nuria. So we're gonna have a new one. This is just this is, see this is what I'm talking about. This book is amazing. This book is amazing. We've got to like Google Maps that Salma range. What do you think? 